Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 13.4 has been out for a few days and I've been using it on my iPhone 11 Pro Max. I also have it on the iPhone 10R here and also the 2020 iPad Pro 12.9. And so I wanted to share with you my experience and then your experience based off the YouTube community poll where I've compiled all of the information based on over 10,000 votes and 200 plus comments and put that information together to tell you what the real world performance in battery life and things like that are on iPhone iOS 13.4. So the first thing is I wanted to go over an issue that Apple has already acknowledged, and that has to do with VPN or virtual private network. If you're using a VPN and you can find that in settings, or maybe you have a separate VPN app, turn on VPN and you'll see it connect up here in a moment. There we go. VPN connected. And for some people, VPN is not encrypting data. And that's what VPN is. It's basically creating a tunnel to whatever network you're talking to. So it creates a secure encrypted tunnel. And for some reason, it's not encrypting all of that data. Now, what specific apps or whether or not it's right through the VPN itself, the settings in settings for VPN is hard to say, but Apple has acknowledged this is an issue and they need to fix it in the future. So what that means is we're going to see an iOS 13.4.1 or maybe an iOS 13.5 beta one fairly soon. But I'll talk more about that towards the end of the video. Now, the first thing is, as far as the experience for me is I've had a few settings lockups. So if you go into settings today and yesterday, I noticed this and I noticed it on my iPhone 11 pro max, you just go in and it would lock up. This is something we saw in early iOS 13 builds with the betas. And then it sort of fixed itself by the time it was out. And some people had it, some people didn't, and it's been an issue on and off and why it still persists. I'm not really sure, but we also see it on the iPad. I had the same exact thing happen on the brand brand new 2020 iPad pro. And for some reason settings would just hard freeze. And so I had to close the app and then go back into it and then it worked fine. So I don't know what that is, but Apple definitely needs to address it. Now, the next thing is the issue I've probably seen the most, and that is Bluetooth crashing. If you try to enter the settings via 3d touch or haptic press. So if you go to settings and haptic press on settings and then go to Bluetooth, you'll see if you have Bluetooth, on or off, it doesn't really matter. And it's already open. You already have settings open. It will work just fine. So again, go to settings, 3d press or haptic press, go to Bluetooth and it's fine. It opens no problem. If I go home and I close that application settings, for example, 3d press on Bluetooth, go to Bluetooth, it will crash every time. So the way to fix it is obviously not close settings. And honestly, you shouldn't be closing applications in the background anyway, unless they use location like maps. So you'll see, I don't really ever close apps ever, unless it's maps or Google maps, something like that. That's actually going to use and run in the background. Otherwise there's no need to close it. Apple even says there's no need to close it. And when I show you all my battery life and things like that, I never close apps almost never. It's very rare. Unless I run a geek bench, I'll close them all just to be consistent across devices. Otherwise I never close them. So lots of people are seeing that issue with 3d pressing settings. Now, the next thing is I still have issues in mail and why mail still has issues. I'm not sure. Sometimes I'll show that I have two email. I'll go in and they don't show up for a while. I'll have to manually refresh it. And then other times, if I use the little button to show me unread in email, it just doesn't work right. So continually I'm having issues with email. So let me go into mail. And in mail, I use this button here for unread a lot. If I tap on it, all my email should disappear unless I've not read them yet. Sometimes that button just doesn't work. So I continually have issues with email for some reason. And a lot of you do as well. And I've heard that in the comments also from the poll. Now, the good thing is performance is really good across all devices. That includes the iPhone 6s plus all the way to the iPhone 11 pro max and performance just going into different applications, whether or not you're playing video games or you're just going into music and scrolling. Most people say other than the freeze up in settings that it's really performing very well, even on older devices. And the 10 R is not old, but people are saying the same thing. So if I go into music, it just loaded and things are nice and smooth. And that's what you really want from iOS 13. And most people say iOS 13.4 is the best release yet. And I would agree with that. It's definitely the best version of iOS 13 in my experience. Now, battery life for me has been good. And the people that typically say that it's not as good generally updated. And then the same day they say it's not good, but you need to give it a few days because there's a lot of background activity that goes on. There's a lot of 
backing up and updating and things like that. So if you've given it a few days and you still have poor battery life, I would check your apps and see what they are and what they're doing. But if we go to settings and go to battery, I'll go to battery health and I have a hundred percent and I continually use this phone. This is my main phone all the time. And I charge this throughout the night and I charge it while I'm driving all wirelessly. So that seems to work best for me. I have a separate video on that, but the updates do not affect the battery capacity. It only remeasures the capacity. So if you saw it go down, it's only because your physical battery degraded a little bit, which is normal for lithium ion batteries. Now you'll see my screen time yesterday was not that great, but it depends on the day. So today I have two hours and 40 minutes of screen on time, two hours and 11 minutes of screen off time. And I used a lot of YouTube and it just depends whether or not you're on Wi-Fi or not. And then you can see other days I had four hours and 39 minutes, six hours and 40 minutes of screen off time. Depending on the day, it's going to vary. So usually most people have been responding that they're getting 10 to 12, 12 hours of screen on time. And in fact, this time around, I took every one of you that mentioned battery and I compiled it to see how many people said they had good battery life and how many people said they had bad out of 200 comments. And out of those 200 comments, people that mentioned battery saying it was good, it was 48 people. Now that covers all devices. So iPhone 6S, 7, 7 plus, iPhone 11. 11, iPhone 10 R iPhone 10, all of them are covered there. And 48 people said it was good. Only 20 said it was bad. So less than half are saying it's bad. Now the problem is there's no way to quantify whether or not the people saying it's bad have actually used it for a few days. If they're just updating, they're going to say it's bad. So hopefully it's better. Most people say it's better and most people say it's phenomenally better, not just a little bit, but hugely better. Now you can read all of those comments yourself and we'll look at that in just a moment. But the other thing people are saying is mail issues. And then finally washed out, uh, washed out wallpaper. Now I have not seen the washed out wallpaper bug myself. So if I go into wallpaper, then go to choose a new wallpaper, maybe go to stills. I have not seen any of these wallpapers wash out when I'm using them. I just haven't seen that on any device. So just keep that in mind. It seems to be good on all of these. So again, when I'm talking about how battery is and things, I'm covering all devices, not just one. So let's take a look at the YouTube community poll. Now, before I go over the YouTube community poll, here are all the issues mentioned. They could be good or bad in either direction. RAM management, people are saying it's good. Battery, I already talked about that. So for example, there's all the numbers. And then here's all the devices you're using based off the comments. So if you told me what device you're using, the numbers should be accurate here. Now, as far as the YouTube community poll at this time, over 11,000 people have voted in just one day. So I really appreciate that. And 53% of you have said that it's great. That's a pretty high number for a public release. Only 3% say it's terrible. And then 14% say, okay, but some bugs. So again, based off these numbers, that's a pretty good, pretty good number or subset that shows you, you probably should update. And then 17% didn't update whether they're waiting for this video, or maybe you want to stay on an older version that's possible. But if you are concerned about battery, it's much more important to upgrade because of security than anything else. There are a lot of bug fixes and things that will fix issues you've had before. In fact, LTE and Wi-Fi and RAM management, those things most people say are mostly or 100% fixed in this update. So just keep that in mind. And then 13% of you say I use Android that's down from 15%. So whether or not people switched from iOS or from Android to iOS, it's hard to say but usually that's 15%, but either way, I appreciate you voting. Now let's take a look at some of the comments. The first one says the only problem is that it won't let me move songs around. Once I've started listening, I can't switch song place in the queue. Everything seems to be working nice and smooth on my iPhone 11. No issues to report on my 6s plus data connection is better than 13.3.1 battery life is fine. And Bluetooth issue when 3d touch in the settings app iphone 10 great frankly all the ios 13 updates except the first two while back were good and i didn't really notice any bugs maybe a bit worse battery life but that's because i live in egypt where it's hotter than what batteries can stand so all of them were good including 13.4 10s max super smooth only bug i've noticed is the bluetooth 3d touch crash i got seven gigs back from beta 5 to gm 
I'm on iPhone 7 Plus and on public beta 13.4, and it's pretty good. I think you mean the final, since there wasn't a final update per se if you're on the GM. But either way, no hiccups, no lagging, speed is good. I did not notice any issues. On my iPhone 10R and my iPad 6th gen, no problems and great battery life. Great on my iPhone 7. When it comes to battery life, I'm getting basically the same as 13.3.1 on 13.4. Same with performance. Battery life is better and data connection is a lot better. iOS 13.4 is good. iPhone 10R. Hi Aaron, my screen on time was approximately seven hours yesterday and I experienced a little bit heating issue on my iPhone 10s Max. Have you also experienced this issue on your iPhone? Uh, not usually if the phone is doing a lot of intensive processes, you will get it to warm up a little bit. That's normal for the processor to get warm, but if it's continually doing it, I recommend rebooting the phone to see if that fixes it. Usually it will. My iPhone seven plus is working fine, fast and smooth with iOS 13.4. I have not encountered any issues whatsoever and the battery life is okay as well iPhone 8 works great. Battery life, as you would expect. Always look forward to your videos. Thank you. iPhone 11 Pro Max user here. Only one bug over the past few days. I was on my way home, aux cord plugged into my phone, and playing music in my car when the phone shut off and went black for about five minutes. It restarted and hasn't had any other issues. Other than that, everything is running great. Terrific battery life and great cellular connection. The battery is just amazing on my iPhone XS Max, but it still has some glitches. Running iOS 13.0 on my iPhone 8 Plus, and so far I have absolutely no problems. It's running perfectly smooth. The mail app is working with no problems, which is a big relief because I use it a lot for work, but the battery life is about the same. Maybe it's because my battery health is at 86%, so I don't see that getting any better, but overall I'm very happy with it. It's running fine on my 11 Pro Max. No issues so far, except from the haptic touch menu settings crash sometimes. Battery life and performance are great. LTE, just like normal. iPhone 11, great battery, great performance. This is a noticeable upgrade all around, in my humble opinion. I'm a beta user, so on the GM version. So, so far no problems at all on my iPhone 11 Pro Max. It's all good, cleared up some bugs I had with 13.3.1. I'm pretty sure battery life is okay as well. And then finally, so far, no problems at all, iPhone 11 Pro Max. So, like I said before, in all of the statistics I gathered and everything, most people say it's a better battery life, and again, give it a few days if you just upgraded for it to improve, but the majority of people are saying that it has better battery life. There's also better RAM management, much better LTE and Wi-Fi compared to 13.3.1 or the previous updates, so they've fixed all those issues, so I highly recommend installing 13.4 if you haven't already already unless you have an alternate reason where some software won't work with it or something like that but the security the bug fixes the battery life performance and everything that goes along with it is definitely worth the upgrade in my opinion so that's it for ios 13.4 now like i said there's issues with that vpn so i would expect an ios 13.4.1 if that's all they're going to fix or if they have other bug fixes and new features to implement then a 13.5 beta 1 this coming week may be possible as well it's hard to say what apple's timeline is going to be based on on current things going on, but hopefully they'll continue with the software updates and fix all those additional bugs like the 3D press to Bluetooth settings issue. So hopefully we see a fix for that real soon. And if we do, of course, I'll keep you updated on all the different social media platforms, including this one. But if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description as I always do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.